Okay, in this video we're going to look at implicit differentiation. And really, if you know and understand the chain rule, you should be an expert implicit differentiator. Uh, because really all, all implicit differentiation is, is is a glorified chain rule tool. So <clears throat> I, what I've done is I've taken a very simple equation. And we actually should recognize this as the equation of a circle. And actually, let me do a better line than that. Uh, if we were to graph this thing, uh, we would get a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2. So it would look, whoops, don't want that tool. I want this tool. OK, so not a great circle, but it'll do. OK, so I want to find the derivative of this thing. OK, so there's there's my equation. Now we know that. Maybe you were taught that in order to graph a circle on your calculator, you had to solve the equation 4y. So if we do that, if we do that, we get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. And then what you did on your calculator is you, you plug the positive version of this in to one line and the negative version of it into another line, and you graphed it as two separate functions that look like a circle when put together. OK, but the, the point here of doing this is to show you that y actually is a function of x. OK, there are x's. There are x's that live inside of this guy. There are x's that live inside of him. And they are plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. OK, so now, here's where our chain rule comes in. If you remember the chain rule, the chain rule says that if I have a function y, and it's a function f in terms of u, and u is a function g in terms of x. Now, that, that may have been confusing, but really all this is, look, maybe you Maybe you, you are used to seeing it like this, f of f of g of x. This is the same thing, f of g of x. OK, well, if I want to find the derivative of this composite function, OK, then what I have to do is I have to kind of go through, I have to go through this middle function, this, this other function, uh, u. Well, if I ultimately want the derivative of y with respect to these x's right here, I have to go through this, this middle function. So we said that the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of the outside function, f prime, with respect to u, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function with respect to x, which is u prime. This would be one way to write the chain rule. OK, another way to write the chain rule, maybe, uh, I don't know how you were taught, but another way to, to write the chain rule is the derivative of y with respect to x. This is ultimately what we're interested in. How does x change as y changes? Well, how does y change as u changes? First, dy du. And then we multiply that by the change in u over the change in x. OK, in other words, the derivative of the outside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. We multiply those two together, and that's our overall rate of change. All right, so now let's keep that logged in the back of our mind, and let's rewrite, let's rewrite our original equation, which we know is an equation of a circle. And let's differentiate it with respect to x. OK, well, let's just take it piece by piece. What is the derivative of x squared with respect to x? Hopefully you said 2x. OK, when, when, when this variable right here matches with the thing you're taking the derivative of, you just differentiate the, the, the old tried and true way of using power rule and all the stuff you know about differentiation. But anytime these variables don't match, OK, here I have a y. But I'm really differentiating with respect to x. This is where my chain rule comes into play. So again, I want to point out to you that, that y is really a separate function 
in and of itself. There's a whole bunch of X's. I'll just write X's. There's X's that live inside of here. And those are the things that I'm differentiating with respect to. So what does the chain rule say? Well, the chain rule says take the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function. Well, the outside function is this squaring thing, so it would be 2y is the derivative of the outside function. Now we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the inside function in this case is just y. And so you can either write y prime or dy dx. It's really a matter of preference. I'm going to write y prime. And then the derivative of the, the right-hand side is just 0. So just so we're clear, connecting this to the chain rule, this is kind of like is kind of like this guy right here. Okay, the derivative of y with respect to u or or this guy here. Okay, the derivative of your outside function. Whereas whereas y prime, this guy, he's more he's more like this. He's the derivative of the inside function. Okay, or this guy right here. Same thing. All right, so make that connection. If you understand chain rule, this is just a, a little leap of logic and, and you're home free. Now, the only thing left to do is to solve for y prime. So let's do that. Let's isolate y prime and we get 2y y prime equals 2x, uh, negative 2x, sorry. And then divide both sides by 2y and we get y prime equals negative x over y. Okay, and this is our derivative. Now notice this is also an implicit equation. We have x's and we have y's here. Um, but we could get to the same results using this derivative as we would get to, um, I guess I didn't have to scroll up that much, as if we differentiated both of these functions with respect to x. We would get the same critical points, we would get the same results. Implicit differentiation just gets us there a little bit quicker. Okay, so in the next video I will go through um, a couple of more examples and I might even take uh, the second derivative implicitly as well. That's really fun. Alright, we'll see you around.